Tom, you don't want to come in here. Get back in the car and go for a ride. What? Radio Free Infinite, episode 280. This week we're talking about probably the first really obscure death metal band I ever got into. Because I first heard these guys way before I was... Of age. We're talking way before I could drink. Way before I could smoke. Way before I could be forcibly drafted into fighting in foreign wars for the... Occupied government. And the goofiest part is, I don't even remember how I first heard about them. Might have been in an interview with some other band I knew about at the time. Might have been in the thank you list on some band's liner notes. Hell, it might have been from a freaking Wikipedia page about something or other. That's how I found out about Moonblood around the same time. But speaking of ancient history, these guys are definitely an important part of death metal history. They might be the oldest death metal band from Florida after friggin' death themselves. We're talking about Hell Witch, whose first demo came out in 1984, ladies ladies and gentlemen. 1984's Nosferatu demo, which honestly sounds like a much more precise version of the kind of stuff Sepultura might be doing a year later, at least in regards to guitar playing. Very much on the evil end of Thrash. And you gotta remember, Thrash hadn't even existed for that long at this point. 1984, very much ahead of its time. But what really sticks out for a lot of people about this demo is... God damn, these drums sound like... Well, there is a very good explanation for that, and that's because at this point, they were definitely a demo level band in the purest sense of the word. That's not even a drum set, it's a seat cushion and a textbook being whacked with a stick. No, I'm not even kidding, you can look that up, read about it in an interview. True story. How Witch has generally always existed as an amalgam of the main songwriting guy, Pat Ranieri, and whoever else he could scrape together to participate in his madness. That's right, Ranieri, another high quality producer of metal content of Italian descent. How about this humidity? And for all its foibles, the incredibly raw production, the not-so-great vocals, and the uh, not-a-real-drum set, I still enjoy that Nosferatu demo. Also, the cover art for said demo is the film poster for the 1979 remake of Nosferatu, which is one of my favorite movies. If you haven't ever seen it, go and check it out. Klaus Kinski is super creepy in the lead role, and Isabel Adjani is particularly attractive in this film. <laughs> what? It's wholesome. Look how friggin' long her skirt is. Don't get any ideas. Surprisingly enough, Hell Witch actually actually weren't the only early 80s metal band from the American South whose name was a combination of hell and some other word that utilized Nosferatu for material. Texas's own Hellstar put out a concept album entitled Nosferatu in 1989 that even utilized samples from the film. That film, of course, not being Nosferatu, but rather the 1979 Dracula movie starring Frank Langella, which is very confusing, but I guess they figured Nosferatu was a catchier title than just straight up Dracula. Think about it though, Tom. So weight loss. AIDS? Nobody's got AIDS. I don't want to hear that word here again. But getting back to Hell Witch, not Hell Star, but Hell Witch. Oh yeah, baby, like the big ass cigar, right? After the Nosferatu demo, Pat wisely took over the vocal performance and got a full group together to release a string of demos throughout the latter half of the 80s. My personal favorite of which is 1986's Transgressive Sentience, featuring one of Hell Witch's signature songs, that being Torture Chamber. On this, their second demo, coming out the same year as Master of Puppets and Rain in Blood, you can already see them moving towards towards what would become their signature style. That being a very brutal blend of technical thrash metal and death metal, with a major emphasis on speed, number of riffs, and wacky transitions. And Pat's vocals being absolutely fucking bonkers. One of the things that really stuck out to me when I first heard this band. Funnily enough, this song actually features one of the catchiest choruses I've ever heard in death metal. I like that dude. It's good stuff. And unlike a lot of bands of the early death metal era, if you ask me, uh, Hell Witch actually got even better on their first full-length album. Where they really took their sound to the next level in terms of technicality, craziness of vocals and guitar riffing, atmosphere, friggin' everything. You can hear that contrast, especially on the 1990 version of the Nosferatu song. <laughs> I mean, just listen to the brutality of the drums, the absolute insanity of the vocals, and it still preserves the catchiness of the 80s demo version. Check out this fucking scream, dude. 
That'll scare the creamer right out of your fucking coffee. And it's not just the songs from the demo that sound great. The stuff that was newly written for the album is also amazing and even more depraved sounding. You got shit like viral exigence. Perhaps some of the earliest utilization of suffocation style polysyllabic words in a death metal context. The frenetic nature of the music coupled with the absolutely insane vocals definitely gives me a bit of a macabre vibe. I've also heard a lot of people compare this band to Atheist. That said, Hellwitch actually predates Atheist. Wouldn't be surprised if these guys were actually an influence on that band. This blasting section coming up here. Kind of sounds like something Immolation might do a couple years after this album came out, but even crazier. And then it goes into some crazy shred guitar transitioning. Entirely unique to Hellwitch followed up with an absolutely devastating groove section. I really like how Pat modifies his vocals to match what's going on in the song. And as you would expect from my man Pat, lead guitar is fantastic. It's absolutely bizarre and twisted, and yet it perfectly locks in with everything the rhythm guitar is doing under it into another awesome transition. That's some Morbid Angel shit right there, and I mean that in a good way. And then they speed it up to this like blast beated thing. Nasty, fast, unholy sounding stuff. But this album isn't entirely all about speed. I mean, granted, most of it exists entirely within the ludicrous speed paradigm. They've gone to plat! But they do drop into a more crushing, groove oriented, atmospheric mode, particularly on songs like More Drivial Dissemination. You hear that? Is that what I think it is? It's the fucking big G, run for your lives! And here we go, about as close as they get to doom metal, and it's also very well done with this war march feeling it has to it. It's like a much more military sounding version of Candlemass, completed with some very well done guitar layering that starts to increase in intensity and strangeness as we work our way farther into this absolute beast of a song. I'm sensing a major tempo shift waiting in the wings. There we go, the death metal, death thrash, whatever you want to call it, is back. With this really cool riff that features a tremolo pick melody punctuated by a more percussive transition section at the end. Speaking of transitions and style changes, check this section out. Real cool bass playing followed by a rather unexpected inclusion. This clean guitar led apocalyptic waltz. I guess that's another reason these guys get compared to atheists a lot. They are very progressive when they want to be. In fact, they're almost sort of like an alternate evolution of Atheist, where if they had stuck with like that death metal sound they had going on Peace of Time instead of going all jazzy later on, they might have ended up sounding a whole lot like Hellwitch. Three years later, they followed up the excellent Sigzeal Miscreancy LP with the Terra Asymmetry EP, which saw them maintaining and expanding on their weirdness. I mean, from the first track, you're hit with the wacky lead guitar, which is Mirabile Dictu, even stranger sounding this time around. Production-wise, they're leaning a little a bit more into a standard sort of death metal chunkiness and thickness which I don't know I like it a lot certainly a very heavy sounding EP not as thrashy a little bit more in step aesthetically with what the rest of death metal was doing at the time Pat's vocals however are even crazier than last time around started incorporating some more guttural style death metal vocals in addition to his high pitched shrieks. And there's some even weirder shit going on like this. The fuck is that? Excellent stuff all around. Damn shame they didn't have a full album of stuff from this era, but you take what you can get. Plus a year later, they put out another very well produced demo entitled Anthropophagi, which was 24 minutes long and had five songs, so if you combine that with the Terra Asymmetry EP, you essentially have the second Hellwitch album, as far as I'm concerned. It's a rockin' good time. This one's really cool because on the faster songs, you see them kind of bridging the 80s style of death metal and the 90s style of death metal. What I mean by 80s style of death metal, I'm talking about stuff like... You know, early death obituary, a little bit more rhythmically simplistic and catchy. And then 90s style death metal, I'm talking about shit like...
You know, immolation, incantation, suffocation, all the Asians. Light them up. A little bit more rhythmically complex and strange and dissonant. You can see these two approaches to death metal kind of being melded in Hell Witch's Unholy Cauldron on songs like Days of Nemesis. Here's that 90s style rhythmically weird shit I'm talking about. It's about to run headlong into that 80s style shit. In a rather clever move, at least in this song, they tend to utilize the 80s style stuff as a platform for either vocal or solo guitar led section, and then jump back into the 90s complex shit for more rhythm guitar oriented bits. Here's a really good example of them using an 80s style backing riff under a very complex solo. Kind of keeps the music flowing very nicely, which is of paramount importance when your music is as chaotic and all over the place as Hell Witches is. Speaking of which, this fucking section, really just complex and strange, almost again kind of doing a suffocation style thing before jumping back into that vaguely immolation sounding riff from the beginning of the song. On the longer songs from this era, they push even further into progressive metal territory, utilizing a whole lot of consonant melody in a way that actually reminds me a lot of the first two At The Gates albums, and maybe even the second Sentenced album. Both of those bands, of course, heavily influenced by Atheist, Atheist more likely than not influenced by Hell Witch. There you go, logical progression. If this riff was coming out of Sweden in the mid 90s, you'd call it proto melodic death metal. Given that it's coming out of Florida in the early 90s, it's more just like a really cool thing that Hell Witch does. And speaking of really cool things that Hell Witch does, this song is heavy on songwriting dynamics, letting notes ring out to bleed over into the next section, led entirely by some clean guitar stuff that would be almost kind of calm and meditative sounding if it didn't have this air of tension and evil to it. You can tell that they're building up to something gross. I mean, the song's called Anthropophagi. It's about eating people. And it's probably the prettiest sounding song about cannibalism that I've ever heard. The chunkiness from the Terra Asymmetry EP is back at full force. Full force. And when the vocals finally come in, in earnest, it's like a death metal response to early BRI or something. Spitting out a whole bunch of words all at once over some very nasty churning guitar riffs before eventually working their way back into that meditative, melodic, waltz-like structure. Really unique sounding stuff. Again, if you're a fan of early At The Gates or the second sentenced album or even the weirder moments of Morbid Angel, I would highly recommend it. They also brought back one of their Stone Cold classics. We wouldn't hear from Hellwitch for a number of years after the release of the Anthropophagi EP, or demo, I guess it's just a demo, but they were rehearsing and recording said rehearsals. It can be kind of hard to hear what's going on if you don't have a finely tuned death metal ear, but rest assured they were big on following up on that more melodic sort of atmospheric technical direction hinted at on the more forward thinking moments of the Anthropophagi EP. However, all of that's a moot point because in 1998, Hellwitch, one of the greatest death metal bands ever, friggin' broke up. Hashtag smile with lays. Hashtag fuck you. <laughs> Oh, hey, easy there, little fella. Don't worry, they came back. First, to do some very convincing renditions of their old classics in a live environment. And that, of course, is great to hear. I don't know how often they play outside of Florida, but damn, dude, if they came around here, I'd go see it. But even more surprisingly than that, they actually came back recording full-length albums. One in 2009, Omnipotent Convocation featured a mix of brand new songs and stuff that they had conceivably been rehearsing since the late 90s. And another that came out just a few weeks ago, Annihilational Intercension. And in another shocking move in this era of we're back, half-assed comebacks, the new Hell Witch sounds just as good as the old stuff. And Pat's vocals are even more wild this time around. Going even harder on the almost macabre style insanity of different voices. It would almost be comical if it wasn't so warped and crazy sounding. The music underneath is vintage Hell Witch, complete with all the technicality and hyper abrupt transitions. And of course, Pat's stellar lead guitar. So overall, Hell Witch, cannot recommend them enough. Amazing band. Should be mentioned in the same breath as your Niles and your Morbid Angels. 
and your nocturnuses and your emulations as far as just classic, crazy, hyper-violent death metal goes. But they aren't, because we live in the realm of... Flat out fucking poo! Let's see if we can change that, huh? Go out and get you some Hell Witch. Thanks for listening or watching or whatever you did. Uh, I'm out. Well, as coincidence would have it, he was last seen in New Jersey. So was the Hindenburg. Maybe you want to look into that, too.